G'day guys, welcome back to True Eagle during this boring buy round. Today I'm going to take a little bit of a look at some of the young talent on our list and do a bit of a review piece on specifically the players who are 24 or younger on the West Coast Eagles list who have played predominantly in the AFL team this year. Now I'm considering doing this a two-part video series. So today's video is going to be focused on the under 24s that have actually spent time or more time in the AFL team than they have in the Waffle team. And I currently intend to film a Waffle version of this as a part two. So focusing on guys like Clay Hall and Kobe Bergiel, whereas this video will be centered around the players that we've already seen. So let me know in the comments if that's something you actually want me to do, and I will absolutely do it. So deciding what's young and what's not on our list is a little bit arbitrary, but I've decided to go with the year 2000 as the cutoff, which means any player that is born in the year 2000 or later, in other words, they're turned 24 this year or younger, they will feature in this video, and we're gonna talk about them in descending order of age. So we'll start with the guys that are at the upper end of this list in terms of age, which includes Bailey Williams, by the way. I mean, it feels like he's been the team so long now and be, been such a like part of the furniture in this team that you kind of forget how young he is. Going all the way down to Harley Reid, who uh, you may or may not be familiar with at this point. So let's have a, a little bit of a snapshot on how some of these players are going. So we'll start with Bailey Williams. Now, Bailey has had a uh, bit of a topsy-turvy year. So when we recruited Matthew Flynn, he trained the entire preseason as a ruck forward, Bailey Williams that is. When Matthew Flynn then tears a hamstring off the bone, Bailey Williams is forced back into that number one ruck role, only to now return to that forward ruck role now that Matthew Flynn has returned into the team. So his preparation hasn't been ideal. And as such, we have seen a slight downturn in what Bailey, Bailey Williams is producing. I don't think it's a long-term concern. It's just no doubt last year was probably going a little bit better. So to be specific, his hitouts have dropped from about 27 a game to just the 18. Now, some of this is influenced by Matthew Flynn coming in back to the team, but Flynn's only played two games. So in general, Bailey Williams is probably getting bested in terms of hitouts more so than previously. This is reflected in his time at center bounces. It hasn't dropped massively, but it was 84% last year, which I think put him at more center bounces than any other Eagle. That has dropped now to 76%. So you can sort of understand it, but either way, when you calibrate those, those two different numbers, it, it would still definitely a bit of a drop in output. And you also consider he's slightly down in disposals, slightly down in meters gained, uh, slightly up in clearances, which is something, but I, I think Bailey has probably just suffered a little bit from a lack of continuity in the same role and, and being mixed around. So I, I think it looms as an interesting second half of the year for Bailey. He now has to earn his spot as the second ruck slash forward. And his, now his competition is Jack Williams, whereas previously he didn't really have meaningful competition. And hopefully over time, he can really harness his forward craft. I don't think he's kicked many goals this year at all. So it's gonna be a learning curve, but considering how young he is, you know, it's he's still worth investing in in this new role. Now let's talk about Luke Edwards, another player who has been around for a while. He's played nine games this season and his average is just nine and a half disposals a game, which is pretty, you know, below average, you'd have to say. I will note that he's had four uh, sub-effective games. So four out of the nine have been sub-effected. So not a true reflection of his output. However, he hasn't had more than 17 touches a game this year and he's spending most of his time on the wing and up forward as far as I can tell. And to be specific, only 7% of center bounces as Luke Edwards played at in the games that he's played, which means he's not being assessed as a true midfielder. He, he is a wingman slash forward. Is that his ideal role? Perhaps, you know, I, I think we're seeing like a, not only a league wide trend, but an Eagles wide trend where the players on the wings are doing a lot of unrewarded running. So it's a little bit hard to assess Luke in that respect. Every game I've watched this year has been on TV, but you'd be going a bit far to say he's having a real genuine impact. He's been a little bit in and out of the team. I mean, you know, I think he had that concussion more recently. I will note as well, you know, back to 2021, I had a look. He had 27 possessions against Richmond. That was the game I thought, gee, Luke Edwards has something, and I still do think he has something. Interestingly in that game, 27 disposals, not a single center bounce that game. It was all exclusively on the wing, assuming that stat is correct. I found that interesting. So, you know, he, he has won plenty of the football in the past. He's just not getting his hands on the footy a lot. And at the moment, you know, I think he's out of contract at the end of this year, probably going to start the second half of the year in the waffle. I think it's a big ask for Luke Edwards to, to re-earn another contract at this point. Even if he hasn't done a lot wrong, he just hasn't done quite enough. Cal Jamison's an interesting one. I'm featuring him in the AFL version of this rather than the waffle video because while he's in the waffle right now, he's played four games at AFL level and just the two with that hamstring injury as well. So he came into this side as a third tall key defender this year. This is the first time we've seen him in that role at AFL level for an extended period. Thought he did pretty well, you know. Yeah, he's averaging about four marks a game. The stats don't really tell the story with key position defenders, but I thought he had some nice moments, a little bit error prone as well. But I actually think with his blend of being somewhat athletic and and also being a bit of a competitor, and the fact that there's some upside from the fact that he's moved around a lot, 
I actually think we might have a decent level AFL key position defender, and he's contracted past this year. He's contracted at the end of 2025. I actually think he's one of the small silver lining wins that we've had this year, and hopefully throughout the second half of the year, he gets a little bit of continuity. He's been back in the Waffle team, I think, two weeks in a row, so a little bit hard to assess him there, but you know, if he continues this trajectory of improvement, you know, he could still have a future at AFL level. I'd say he's been solid. Tyler Brockman is the next youngest, so he's still only 21 and he turns 22 in November. Very special birthday, the same as one very handsome mustachioed YouTuber. But Tyler Brockman, we obviously recruited through trade from Hawthorne at the end of last year. He's played about 32 games at AFL in general, with just the six with us, nine disposals, no goals. So I think we all saw the same thing with Brockman. He looked clean and tidy when he has the ball, struggled to really work himself into the game at AFL level. He was tackling two and a half tackles a game. I mean, it's solid, uh, but probably rightfully dropped when he was dropped. You know, in the two years at, at Hawthorne, kicked about a goal a game. So he, he doesn't have any problem finding the goals generally. It just hasn't clicked for him, specifically at West Coast at AFL level. So we'll note in the last three weeks, you know, obviously post this incident that happened a few weeks ago, he's come back into the Waffle team. He's played three pretty good games. He had 16, 18, 19 possession games, and he kicked a goal in each of those games, and he's averaging about four tackles a game. So he's coming into the Waffle side and, and played beautifully the role we hoped he plays at AFL level, which I think is a good start, even if it hasn't been the cleanest of starts at, um, at his career at West Coast. Let's talk about Brady Hoff, you know, probably the, maybe the second best performed young player on this list. He's been outstanding. You know, he's about 190 centimeters, drafted as a midfielder forward, played as a wing, you know, primarily in his first year. Now really settled as that, uh, small defender you call him because he plays on smalls but he's six foot three and you know I think he's trialed a little bit as a third tall defender as well so he could be that versatile Brad Shepard type I think he's done some great jobs nullifying opposition small forwards he's been fantastic and honestly one of the more dependable and reliable players um, you know if you look at the stats his his possessions and a lot of the ball in hand stats have dropped off but it doesn't reflect the improvement we've seen from Brady Hoff I think he's played about 43 games now, should tick over 50 this year, and yeah, he's kind of already a pretty good player for us. It's great. Let's talk about Jack Williams. Jack Williams is routinely a player that I don't expect to see in the AFL side, just because he's a young 198 centimeter ruck forward. Like you just think, logically, he shouldn't be close to the team. He earns his way into the team, and I think has shown some real signs of improvement. So he's played 10 games this year, and I think he played 10 last year. I think he played one waffle game this year, which is crazy. Like he's actually spent a lot of the time in the AFL side. Statistically, you know, a lot of his output is similar to last year, but I do think there's been an eye test difference. So he's made some slight wins in tackles, He's getting a little bit more meters gained. So that just implies that the impact is a little bit higher. He had a three goal, 15 possession game. That's like a real uplift in performance from him in a single game. I think that was against Essendon and he kicked a late goal as well. I think that shows clear growth. And even just in terms of hitting the scoreboard, he's kicked nine goals from 10 games this year. It was five from 10 last year. And clearly slightly stronger and bigger and, and you know, probably holding his own slightly better in the ruck, even if it's not meaningfully translating in more hitouts. So I'm very happy with the progress of Jack Williams. And I think he signed a one-year deal at the end of last year. And I just can't imagine a scenario where he doesn't earn another contract. I think if you told me Jack Williams played 10 games in the first half of his year, I would have been very, very impressed. And that's exactly what I am. Again, second half of the year, I'm not sure if he starts in the team. We do have, you know, some competition for spots for talls, but you know, I think very, very acceptable progress from Jack Williams. Then there's Noah Long, who's obviously disappointingly ruled out for the most of the year with a PCL. Well, all of the year, but he's played seven games up to this point, which has taken him to 26 overall. You know, probably a slight decrease in output from Noah Long. I wouldn't say he necessarily meaningfully improved that. I think he probably just looks stronger and fitter and a little bit faster. And, you know, I think his kicks were a bit snappier this year. So from the eye test, like there's some development there, but he wasn't really getting any more of the footy. He dropped in a few stats, you know, slightly less possession, slightly less efficiency. Slightly less contested possessions, interestingly as well, but slightly more meters gained. His tackles inside 50 dropped as well. So it's a small sample size, but he you know, he wasn't kicking goals. He kicked just the two goals from seven games this year. I feel like it's very hard to, to be harsh on you know a small forward, particularly in a forward line that doesn't get a lot of the ball inside 50. So I would just say it's, it was a slight drop off in output from Noah Long, but nothing to be concerned about. And hopefully we, we get stuck into the preseason early next year. I don't think there's any concern that his injury is going to prevent him from a good preseason next year. And we see him take more strides next year year. 
Let's talk about Moran Marek, one of my favorite young players. Still only 19. Mid-season draftee last year, so he's only been on the list about 12 months now. Kicked five goals from 11 games this year, just the eight disposals, albeit three of those games have been sub-affected. He's slightly down in tackles and possessions and things like that, but I think it's really hard to assess Marek. You know, I think his role has been changing. Even as a forward, his role has been changing. You know, Sometimes he'll be a little bit deeper, and now we've got a few more tools in the team. He's playing a little bit higher. Is he playing a little bit on the wing? Could he play back? I'm not too sure, but you know, I will note that he has not been dropped once in his time at West Coast. He played one waffle game when he first came over, played the rest of the year in the team. This year has played the entire year in the team other than like a waffle preseason game, I think. So while the, you know, demonstrated improvement isn't there, I think from the eye test, there's been some physical development, you know, significantly bigger than he was last year. And, you know, it's still curious to me exactly what sort of player he develops into, whether it's a true third tall like a Gunston, or is he going to play a little bit higher up the ground like an oversized wingman? I'm not too sure, but I like what I see. And from a talent point of view, absolutely keeping the, in the team, provided we can get the balance of talls right, which is a whole different question. Now, this list has been moving down in, in order of age. Um, and pleasingly, some of our best talents are towards the bottom end, which is, I suppose, a good thing. So Ruben Jinbi's next. He is still 19. He turns 20 in September, which is kind of crazy when you look at the man mountain he is. But I've talked about Jimby previously. I think we've seen some slight improvement from him. You know, the stats are there. He's getting about 16 touches a game as opposed to 13.7 last year. Still about two and a half clearances. I think his tackles are down. I think he's spending less time at the ball drop by comparison, or at least it felt that way. His center bounces have actually moved down 4%, but you can still play in the midfield and not necessarily be lined up at the center bounce, but you feel like he's tagging less, playing a little bit more outside and, and in an open role. And I will note as well, his kick to handball ratio has, has changed quite a lot. So to be specific, last year he was handballing at eight times for every five kicks. So, you know, a reasonable amount, more likely to handball. This year, it's about 50-50, and that's also reflected in his meters gained, which has gone from 150 to 230. So just it, reflecting what we already see in the eye test in, in that he's using the ball a little bit more assertively, a little bit more aggressively, getting the ball in space a little bit more. And, and you know, considering how young he is, I'm very happy with the progression of a Ruben Jinbi. He's probably versatile. You can chuck him at a center bounce. You can chuck him on the wing and he adds defensive pressure, he can win the footy. I'm very happy with the way he's going, even if he hasn't had, you know, the breakout game and, you know, hasn't had a highlight like a Harley Reid. I think I'm pretty comfortable with what Ruben Jinbi adds to this team and his improvement has been very respectable. Considering as well the difficulty of role, you know, it's been a bit of a baptism of fire for Ruben. Now let's talk about Harley Reid. Now I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but he's actually pretty good. So he just turned 19 if you didn't know. To throw some stats at you, in 11 games, he's averaging just under 18 disposals. He kicked the eight goals. Five clearances, 3.6 tackles. That's the thing I like. He does rack up tackles as well for a guy that you want the ball in the hands of. You know, he, he does go in and apply pressure and do things like that. He's, uh, I think he ranks pretty highly for uh, pressure acts, if I'm not mistaken, as well, which is which is good. Three inside 50s, 78% efficiency. I mean, we, we know he uses the ball well. One of our best field kicks as well. I mean, in my opinion, it's probably Marek, but, you know, Reed does have the ability to hit those high degree of difficulty kicks as well and, and deliver the ball like a bullet to the forward line. He's very, very well-rounded. One other statistical thing that I've noticed with Reed is, you know, I looked a few weeks ago and he was slightly more uncontested than contested. And that's fine. Like, you know, with a player with his damaging skills and outside game. He's got pace to burn. He uses the ball well. It's a little bit like Shuey. You kind of want him to get a little bit more uncontested ball because that implies that he's going to be in space and be able to really use the footy well. But I did notice his contested numbers have slightly shifted. I think he's actually winning slightly more contested possessions than he is uncontested, which is not a shock. I mean, the guy can win contested ball. I'm sure you know that by now. But it's just an interesting quirk there. He's, uh, he's getting his hands on the footy. And, you know, over the last month, I think right before he got suspended, his attendances at the center bounce have also shot up, which just means he's getting more and more exposure, more trust, and uh, it kind of implies that he's running out games better as well. I'll tack on to the end of this video, Jack Hutchinson. He's not the youngest. He's 22 um, and obviously our mid-season recruit. Now I'm reviewing two games and he played one in the AFL, one in the uh, Waffle, um, and he's played most of the year in the VFL, so you could realistically put him in the Waffle video, but you know, I thought I'd just shout him out here and Played one game of AFL, had the four possessions, not really uh, an outstanding debut, that's that's for sure. But all I can really assess here is the fact that I'm really happy we have him. A player that didn't progress through the traditional talent pathways. He's uh, gone through the VFL this year, very brief since at Collingwood's VFL side. Nine and a half disposals, three and a half tackles. I think he kicked nine goals in that time as well. Nine goals one, which implies, obviously, uh, an ability to kick accurately. Still a lot of upside for a guy that didn't come through those traditional pathways. I did also find out he used to live in Perth as a teenager as well. So, I mean, 
mean, I didn't really have any concerns about him leaving us. He's only been here for one game. But obviously, you know, kicked five goals in the waffle the week before his AFL debut. So I'm hoping a guy that we keep into the side and at 22 probably is ready for some AFL exposure. So yeah, it's a little bit hard to review a player like that who's been on the the list for two weeks, but I thought I'd throw them into this video anyway. So that's my crack at assessing the youth, guys. Let me know in the comments uh, what you agree with and what disagree with. Like I said, let me know if you want me to do the waffle version of this, where I talk about all the other 24 and under talents that I didn't mention in this video. By all means, let me know any other ideas for content you want to see during this buy round or in just general. Like I can still do it if it's not the buy round. But for now, I thank you for watching. I thank you for being subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.